Welcome everybody, another edition of For the Love of Dog. I'm Steve McLean, co-founder of The Little Red Dog, and I'm here with Gary Newcomb. Gary, what have you been up to? Been dogs, no good. Dogs, 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 dogs. Nothing else? No. Nope. No music? No nope. art? No. Nope. When's the last time you've done any, it's like street art or anything? You, have you done anything lately? Yes. What'd you do? Well, I've been doing political work. Uh-oh. Okay, I'll <laughs> shut up. You might get arrested. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to go. I did make Enough said. I did make some cool Biden signs though. Did you? I cut some stencils and made two color Biden signs. That is awesome. It's so funny. I don't want to really talk too much about politics, but it's so funny because I just assumed my arch nemesis in the neighborhood was for a certain candidate. president. Yes. <laughs> candidate. President. Incumbent. Yeah. And so I I was I was wrong. We actually agree, but now it kind of takes the fun out of hating the guy. <laughs> wow. I'm sure that there's I'm no, so you'll torn. find another reason. I'm so torn. No. It's not hard for us to find a reason to hate no, people. No, it's it's really not. It's really not. Um, but I, but seriously, I'm so torn. I looked I looked at this lawn for the longest time. Like no. Yeah. Sometimes they blow you away, or the other way. So does that mean I'm a? I guess that means I'm a dick too. <laughs> yeah. No. I uh, I had a neighbor who I thought was the coolest guy on my block. Yeah. And then I saw his Facebook. I'm like, oh my. I know. Off his rocker. I know. I, I, we can't keep talking about this because I'll, I'll. Yeah, we'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll get people upset. Anyway, yeah. thanks for tuning in. This is not a political show. This is all about dog behavior and dogs and fun stuff. But you know what, though? Speaking of like politics and and things we should shouldn't do and laws and sh- and shit. Um, people people always complain especially applicants that are trying to get a dog from us and they're always complaining when they don't get their way. Yeah. You know, we decide they're not a good fit and we think we're actually doing them a, a, a solid, which I think we are doing. They don't solid. know. They don't know, but they don't we understand. Are. Yeah. And I think the reason, the main reason why we're so picky, especially with the bully breeds is because I don't think people understand in California, I can't speak for other States, but, but in California, animal control makes, Owning a dog so difficult. Oh yeah, I mean their rules are they change yeah. with the wind. And if your dog's you know not the normal dog registered and right. tagged and steps out of line, they are on you. Yeah, and I know you. I'm I'm there with you about registering your dog, you know, and all this. And I don't mean I don't want people to stop, you know, registering <laughs> their dogs. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't. You know, I don't like being on someone's radar. Yeah, I don't trust. I especially don't trust animal control in my area. Yeah, you know, and they're so. There's nothing really where you can go to. You know, they'll say, "Well, check the penal code, whatever." But that's not true. They have their own rules oh, and laws. Yeah, like that they bend. Yeah, because I've literally seen them make a decision on little dogs, with with a horrible background. And a big dog with one little mistake. Yep. And that oh, dog's no, that's at risk. the problem with a lot of laws that we have, even our laws, is that it comes down to, you know, it being enforced is discretional. Right. So, you know, if somebody has an issue with a certain breed or a certain size or something, and right. then they're going to go right to, you know, that's the issue. Right. Right. And it, it really is their, their rules. And you have to play by their rules. And it's impossible. You know, we've been doing this a long time. We've been to multiple hearings. Yeah. Well, let me back up. Let me back up. The mo- the main reason why we're so tough on applicants is because if the owner gets into a situation where we let them adopt a dog, let's say we let them adopt a, a bully breed dog that's anywhere between 45 and 80 pounds, and they don't do their job, right? Mm-hmm. They actually put the little red dog at risk because animal control, to a certain degree, you know, they want to know the history of the dog, mm-hmm. and they'll come to us sometimes and say, "Well, why did you?" Yeah, with uh, the brow dog? dipped and say, "Why did why you did adopt you? to this?" And first person? of all, yeah, first of all, it's none of your business. Yeah, right. I mean, we do we do a very good job. Yeah, we vet people pretty we vet hard. Vet people very well, but we, you know, people lie. Mm-hmm. We've made mistakes, but it really shouldn't be in their business anyway. Yeah. and it's not. We've taken the court. Yeah, if on this you before. want, if you want to oversee how dog rescues handle their business, then make rules that do that. Right. Don't come in after the fact when there's no rules that say you know a rescue's got to do this, that, right. and the other. And what's frustrating about that is when they adopt dogs out to someone directly, 
through the shelter. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, and they make mistakes a lot. Way more than we do. There, there's no retribution to, no. to them, right? No, okay. they have a 50% return rate. Obviously, they do they're not doing a good job on vetting people. And, and by the way, Gary just didn't throw that number out there. The uh, the national average is 50%, mm-hmm. by the way. Uh, Orange County, Animal Control, where we live, is worse. Um, but what's, what's really frustrating, let me get back to the situation I'm talking about. So we let you adopt a dog. You don't do your job. Or maybe you do your job, but You're good people, day. yeah, good people make mistakes. You know, it, this this scenario could happen to me. This scenario could happen to you. The dog gets loose. Let's talk about a dog that's between again forty pounds, eighty pounds, has a high prey drive. The dog gets out by accident. Maybe the gardener leaves the the, the gate open. The pool cleaner leaves the, the gate open. The dog bolts. Sees a uh, a little poodle that has weird energy yeah, and, and barky. Yeah, and and so the dog tries to get the little poodle. Now the, the owner of the poodle tries to break up the fight. Guess what? He gets bit, right? Okay, yeah. so now animal control gets involved because the person's been bit. And I, I 100% of the time, and, I, and I, I mean this, 100% of the time when we've been involved in this situation, the person never knows which dog bit them. Oh, yeah. Never knows yep. for sure. But guess who's going to get blamed? Yep. Okay. Nobody has to show proof to animal control which dog did it. Nope. They don't have to show proof, right? It's just the person's word. Yep. Okay. Now or, or animal control's determination. That's even if right. They don't. That's right. So now it's this bullshit situation where animal control says we're gonna do an investigation. Okay, because they have their little badge and, and mm. you know they like, to, they like to have their little investigation, you know. Because they got picked on in school. I'm not a dog catcher. I'm an uh, agent now. That's right. And you have to say officer. They get pissed <laughs> if you don't say officer with their last name. So yeah. I always use their last name because I know it pisses them off. Anyway, because I'm petty that way. So now now the dog is deemed dangerous because it bit a human being. And by the way, that's an automatic... In Orange County, I don't know about even place else. Even if the idiot human puts their hand in between the two dogs and they get bit... It doesn't matter that Orange County Animal Control, they're still going to deem the dog dangerous, even though the idiot put their hand in there. Yep. That's such a stupid law. Yep. And it should also be a law that you have to prove that it was the dog that you're deemed dangerous. They always say it's the bigger dog. Yep. Now, I'm willing to acquiesce and say, yes, I'm sure 75% of the time it might be the bigger dog's problem or fault that bit the human, right? Yes. But it's not 100%. Yeah. It's definitely not an innocent until proven guilty situation. Yeah. It's not. It's not. And so now and we I have... Mean, oh, go ahead. It's, we'll use it in a car accident situation. Everybody always wants to point fingers when you had a car accident. That's right. So is an owner going to say, my dog bit me when this dog ran up? No. no. They're going to say, this no. dog ran up and bit me. Mm-hmm. Because they're not going to put it on their dog, especially to animal control, who's going to be the one who eventually enforces something on them. Right. So now let me, let's talk about what happens now. So now the dog's deemed dangerous in the, in the, in the county. So now the owner of said dog has to put up a million-dollar bond of insurance, which roughly costs about $2,000 a year. Signage has to go up. Gates have to be put up at a certain to distance. Code, yeah. Right to code. The dog has to be muzzled from Whenever now on. Whenever they're out. Outside. It's a pain in the ass, right? Yeah. If you try to fight them, and they're, they're, yeah. they're, you, you can have a hearing, but it's bullshit. Yeah. The hearing is stacked against you. Yep. Uh, we've brought, we've been, again, we've been in a situation a lot trying to help other owners, not, not just owners that we've adopted to, but people that we know that are having trouble. And every time we actually fight it, we always lose the hearing, but, but then you have the option to go to court, which we've done and we've won because the judge at that point has to, has to go by the actual code, Mm -hmm. you're right. And now you're in a court of law, so you do have to prove certain things yeah and it always gets tossed but orange county or but what's that cost a lot yeah a lot you know a lot of money yeah and in orange county and i'm sure animal control of the united states knows this yeah so they're just going to go with what our court says yep right and it's it, it's 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 a racket yep. as far as i'm concerned now don't get me wrong there's other places that we've dealt with animal control and they've been far superior than orange county yeah but has that kind of been your experience or yeah yeah, for the most part, anytime you get to a metro area, you have, you know, two sides of, you know, the political spectrum right. and you have, you know, something will happen. People will say, oh, that kid got mauled. We need to clamp down and do crazy laws. So you have the, you know, 
people passing laws during emotional times. Right. And anytime you have that, you have laws that aren't going to be fully vetted out to right. it's, weed out some of the crazy stuff. You're making decisions based on emotion. Yes. This is never a good it's idea. It's never a good idea. No, no. Uh, you know, I and so this is to answer the original question, why are we so hard on applicants? It's because we've been down this road before. We know that potentially if you're not on it, you could put yourself in this situation. We're all in this situation yeah. anyway, but yep. if you're not on it, you know, you're gonna it's gonna it's going to exponentially increase the chance of you're gonna do something stupid, right? Yeah. And in essence, the dog gets the blame. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, the family Again, we've been doing this for nine years, and I've never seen a family fight it. Families always give up the dog, so now the dog's at risk of being euthanized now, because, even though it was their yeah, fault. No, absolutely. The yeah. system makes it seem like it's insurmountable. You know, it, we're taking it, it your, yeah, we're taking your dog. We'll give you this opportunity to come to a hearing, but I'm going to tell you now, we're taking your dog. Right. So you know, they basically back a family into a corner, and you know what family is going to be like? Oh yeah, well I'm going to get a lawyer. Right. Your average people can't do that. So Even people that have the, the means don't want to go through the hassle. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're dealing with that right now of San Clemente. Now, San Clemente Animal Control, outstanding. I have nothing but good things to say about uh, San Clemente Animal Control. Very, very well ran, very informative. The communication is awesome. My only complaint is when the dog is in this situation we're talking about, they make it so difficult yeah. to get the dog transferred even to a different county yeah they really make you do your due they diligence a, they have a good threshold but once the dog crosses yeah. that threshold it's over yeah and unfortunately uh, again boils down to human error the yeah. family um, i'm not going to mention names but the family let this dog down it's a great dog yeah it's i a mean great dog. that's what we say all the time it's you know dogs aren't inherently bad no. and owners owners put dogs in positions right. that you know make now them the, look yes that make them look shitty yeah, I, that's so true. You know, every time I'm not going to say 100 percent of the time. Uh, with every situation in the United States, when a dog gets deemed as as being dangerous, I don't know every. St- oh no, absolutely. I'll go the other but, side and say that absolutely there are dogs who sure, have imbalances. And sure, but they, everyone, every every incident that we've been involved with, which is about eight issues, all eight where the dog was deemed uh, dangerous by the city's code. It, first of all, it was human error. It wasn't the dog's fault. Mm-hmm. Dogs just being a dog. Hu- humans didn't do their job, and because of that, the dog's having to suffer. The dog in all eight of the situations that I've been involved in, I would not deem the dog dangerous. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I would have no problem with that dog living next door to me. Yes. You know. Yep. And you know how what a pain in the ass it is for Nigel. Nigel's a pain in the ass. I mean, he you know as as much as we work with him, he is very sweet. There's, he has a lot of good qualities, but you know Nigel's a typical Chihuahua. So let's say I had a dangerous dog next door, right? Yep. That would eat you. That would eat Nigel in New York second. Yep. I I would not with the eight dogs I'm thinking of. I would not have a problem with Nigel, you know, and this dog next door. Yeah, is my point. No, we I've run into very few dogs in my whole career that were actually messed up on their own. Right. By far, it's dogs that have had owners that didn't set boundaries, that didn't do it right, and they put the dog into a mental situation that the dog was now making decisions for himself. And right. when that happens, right, the dog's going to go astray. Yeah, and I talk about that all the time. I always tell families if the dog does, if your dog does something stupid in that moment, they perceive something as theirs, or they were acting independently. Yep. Which again, the dog's being a dog, but you have to filter that for your dog. Absolutely. Right. And that's and the structure is what keeps your dog dependent on you. Right. So when asked the question for our listeners, why are we so hard? We are so hard on applicants to keep the A to keep the dog safe, obviously, right? Yep. And then and B to keep the family safe. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you right now the families involved in the situation in, in uh San Clemente. You know, they're good people. It's a good family. But it was their fault that this happened, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But, you know, we made a mistake. And so the dog's paying the price for it. And we all feel horrible about it. Yeah. You know. But that's the deal. When you're dealing with so many people, you know, we've done a lot of dogs over the last nine years. Yeah. There's going to be dogs that, you know, just get wrapped up in some kind of incremental issue. Right. And, you know, it's just the numbers. Unfortunately, we can do the best we can to find the right. best families, but we're humans. 
We all make mistakes. We do, and that and that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at is we are going to make mistakes, but when we're interviewing applicants, we're trying to see if at least your baseline is correct. Yes. No. Absolutely. There's yeah. you have to be able to differentiate as a rescue when you're vetting adopters between people who just don't have it right. and, and people who may make a mistake. Sure. We're all liable to make a mistake. Absolutely. If you don't socialize your dog, if you don't give them regular walks, if you don't do certain things, it's not, you know, oops, right. you set your dog up for that long before it actually happened. That's and this right. is just the fruit at the end of the branch. Right. And and people never see it that way. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think we sum- I think we kind of sum that up perfectly, I think. <laughs> Why we're so difficult. Uh, we're still going to be difficult. We'll always be difficult. We'll always be difficult. For the, for but the good fair. of our dogs. But fair. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I think PJ's coming on set here real soon, so please stay tuned. PJ! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye, Gary. Later. Hey, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for the love of dog. Totally good news. New Road is back with their food. However, it's only treats. That's okay. We love the treats. You saw Gary try them weeks ago. Not weeks ago, months ago. Either way, it doesn't matter. They're great. They're terrific. Treats only. The promo code is REDDOG15, all caps. Type that in when you're ordering. You get a discount. Plus, we get a little bit of a donation. We love it. Please check it out. New Road. Thanks, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with PJ Rosh, co-founder of The Little Red Dog. You're listening to For the Love of Dog. PJ. Hey. Welcome back. Hey. We had just enough budget left to have you on for 15 minutes. God damn. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we couldn't get anyone else, I guess. Is that why you're upset? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> should get something better. We should uh, put out some uh, advertisements to see if anybody <laughs> wants to be on the show. Even my mom doesn't want to be on the show. That's how bad it is. Anyway. We were, Gary and I were talking earlier about, um, you know, animal control and the weird laws that they just kind of make up. And I know that's... Um, Especially Orange County. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously that's what we're focusing on. I, we, I did give some positive shout out to uh, San Clemente's, pro, you know, animal control and, you know, Dana Point. That They seem like they're better. Yeah. I mean, in fairness to animal control... They have to, it's, it, you know, I know you don't like cops, but like my, my brother and my father were both police officers. So I see the other side of it. I'm not saying they're not crappy co- cops out there. We know we see it. There's been video, so it's been proven. But um, when anybody like that, animal control police officers have to come into a situation, they just have to assume, you know, that they're doing the right thing, that they're doing, that they're keeping the public safe, right? That's mm-hmm. their, their main concern and they don't know that this dog that just you know went after and killed a little dog is really a good dog and had it just been you know walked properly and not let off a leash and all these things that that, that it's a perfectly good dog that could be you know a great family dog so they don't know that and when they see a dog you know somebody get bit from breaking up a fight again they have to go into that mode where it's automatic quarantine whatever so my point is yes they do, animal control frustrates me, and often I think so, they they um, come up with these um, assumptions or in their investigations they came up with these you know this is what happened and, and sometimes I'm like wow no other normal person would think that but again I do try to si- see the other side of it but I think um, in the you know we live in Orange County I think that we've dealt with Mission Viejo animal control. We've dealt with San Clemente animal control. And both of those, I think, are actually very easy to deal with. I do find the OC animal care people not as easy to deal with. Yeah. And not as what, logical. Yeah, and I think... Um, well, I, I'd even go one step further and say it has. it's not so much logic to me. It's a lack of dog behavior education on the part of Orange County. Yeah, I where think it's I logic. Think, okay, well... <laughs> they come to these conclusions where I think any... You know, the laws are usually written something like that any reasonable person would come to this conclusion. And I think... I'm just going to keep hitting that. And, <laughs> and, and I read these conclusions and I think, wow, 
okay, maybe I'm the one that's an idiot. So I'll talk to other people and they come to the same conclusion I do. And so that's why I'm saying I don't always feel like they're reasonable or logical. Whereas I, the other animal controls that I have dealt with are a little... Just a little logic, more logical. Well, yeah. They I, still want to do I, their job. I they still it. want to do a quarantine. They right. still want to, all those things. Sure. And I and I completely understand that. But they're just a little more logical. Well, I don't understand the quarantine. And every county has that same law. I mean, you can quickly show the dog has ha- has rabies. I mean, it has his rabies vaccination. So why the why the the BS of putting the dog in quarantine? Well, That's uh, that to me is because silly. Because the there's certain counties in California and Orange County is one of them that's been designated as a rabies area. So at some point, a dog of wildlife has had rabies. And so they, it's like a zero tolerance policy, which I really, again, don't mind because you don't want rabies to be rampant. But again, this is where the logical thing comes in. It should be perfectly acceptable for you to quarantine your dog at home, especially if somebody got bit from trying to break up a fight or intimidated mm-hmm. the dog or something, mm-hmm. that, that there was provocation mm-hmm. or reason. Um, if the dog is just at large and you don't know it, I, I understand. Oh, why of course. Been. But, but if, you can saying, show, if you can show proof that your dog's been vaccinated, I don't understand. The... They should just quarantine. I don't mind the quarantine. Quarantine at home, but yeah. don't, you know. Well, don't... they want the revenue. Yes. So they want you to take the dog that to is, their place. That is the part. Well, my point my point was that, and I don't want to be specific, but we do have a dog in, in danger that's in San Clemente. My thing about San Clemente is. I think you're being very specific. <laughs> well, I'm talking about I don't want to talk about the family or the dog's name, but. The thing I do like about San Clemente is they're they're actually admitting that it's human error, and that the dog but is but good. Hand, yeah, the dog is good, but their hands are tied. I get that, yeah. and, and I and I and they they've been working with us to try to help. But that's what I mean about logical. Yes, but in Orange <laughs> County isn't that way. No, they are absolutely not that. Orange way. County is not that way. And at they all. also do things that are um, kind of shady, in my opinion. Like they, if your dog is being declared dangerous, they they charge you a fifteen hundred dollar and fifteen hundred and seventy one dollar fee or fine. That's not a law. It was a board yeah, of supervisors. Um, internal internal thing but it has yeah. never been accepted into law and yet they get away with it they do get so, away with it. In the, well, in, i'll take that one step further they if you don't pay it do they put that fine on your ta- on your uh uh property tax property tax no i know so, they get away with it and it's or, it's completely illegal because it's not a law uh, not property tax but state whatever it is yeah, the franchise way, tax board yeah right yeah so either way you're gonna have to owe it if it, you know and then and i don't there's got to be a way to fight that, but they know you're not going to fight it because you don't, you don't have enough money to, to hire a lawyer to, 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 to go against them. Yeah. Well, that's what they're banking, I mean. Yeah, there's there's some... There is an attorney who's trying to fight that, and I think that they're hopefully going to get that um, deliberated on, whatever they call it, and hopefully that will, will stop. Or if they really want to do it, then they need to make it a law, and that's... And yeah. I, you know, one or the other. Either right. you can't have both, and that's what they're doing now. And I do think it's very shady. And like I said, it's not very logical, and that's why I have a problem with that. Yeah, you don't so. see the the one thousand five hundred and seventy one dollar bill with a poodle in the same situation. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, we rescue a lot of pitties, and so we know that's that's the one that's gonna get. You know, they do take a bigger bite. You know, and I that's the one that's gonna you're gonna end up with a fine. Um, although Orange County will tell you that they have declared um, all types of dogs dangerous, including Chihuahuas. Um, but you know, like you said, most time it's not gonna be those dogs that are that and, are considered yeah, and, vicious or and, dangerous. And when we, I should say, when you started this, did you ever? imagine animal control would be such a difficult entity to deal with no i actually <laughs> stupidly i thought that we would have a good relationship with them. or maybe i just didn't think about it. i didn't them. think about it at all you know i mean i'm i i'm a law-abiding person i that's what i said i don't mind following the rules but i don't like it when the rules keep changing based on what's sure. um the helpful wind. to them yeah, the wind and yeah. that's what you know well it's kind of maybe Along that same uh, vein, as far as not seeing something, um, <laughs> Nicole asked it. Nicole, uh, it was a good segue. Uh, yeah, a production team asked a really good question. Um, if anyone wanted to start a, uh, you know, some crazy person wanted to start their own dog rescue, um, what advice would you give them? What's the first thing you would tell them? Slit your wrists. 
<laughs> Don't on. do it. No, seriously. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, I think our first instinct was good. Try, you know, approach it as any other business, you know, um, get back to people, um, try to make communication great, um, get going on, you know, all the, uh, the essentials, you know, decide quickly, are you going to save just one sort of dog? Are you going to save all dogs? And that's something that we actually kind of, we still to this day kind of disagree on. Um, but you know, you enter it like you would any other business, you know, make sure you have at least six months of revenue in the bank before you start, uh, is important. Money is important. Um, I don't know. What about you? I, I mean, to me, it's, it's saying we, you know, you and I have set up businesses before, we kind of know about being, you know, professional or at least looking like we know what we're doing, right? What would what what is your key yeah. top three things? My um so for me, I went I get to ask this a lot, I really do. And I say, um, if you want to start a re- dog rescue, have a lot of money. And <laughs> You know, and, right. the, and the second one is, and then this is serious, I have this written down somewhere. If you want to start a dog rescue, don't volunteer for a dog rescue that's already established. Um, actually, that might have been my first one. And then I said, if, if you want to really start a rescue, have a lot of money. And the third one is, seriously, don't start one <laughs> unless you have a lot of money. I mean, that is a thing. It will bleed you dry. It really will. Because you start out and you think, oh, it's no problem. And, oh, this $1,500 vet bill, I'll just put that on my own personal credit card, you know, which you do. And the next thing you know, you're, you're in debt because you're doing that. And, you know, maybe other people are smarter. We probably should have started fundraising um, sooner. Um, you know, there yeah. were pledges. There's always right. been pledges. Right. But like, you know, bona fide uh, s- fundraising, we weren't really good at it or nor had time for it in the beginning. Now we know that that's a crucial part and that's the only way we can ser- um, save dogs. But yeah, I, I honestly, you do have to have a lot of funds or access to funds or be a good fundraiser. And I know that sucks, but that is very crucial. And, and you're not going to be able to save anybody if you don't have that. The other thing is, I, you know, I mean, I had, I've had animals all my life. So I sort of knew like the shots and things, you know, you want to spay and neuter and all of those things like that. But, um, you know, the first time we rescued a dog out of a shelter and she came down with Parvo, that was an expensive was yeah. thing and, yeah. ex- and very serious, you right. know. The thing about Parvo is that um, if you catch it, it has like something like a 97% you it know, does success now. rate. It does now. But it, you gotta, it didn't 10 years ago. You got to catch it yeah. soon. Right. Um, and so I didn't, it never occurred to me that, I mean, I... I kind of knew about kennel cough that most dogs come out with kennel cough and that's right. sort of like, okay, that can be treated. It's a cold, but I didn't realize that, you know, we've, we've rescued dogs that end up coming down with distemper and parvo. And so these were not even on my radar at all. Right. Um, you know, the, the things, I mean, there's, again, there's dogs that have been hit by cars and whatever, and you know that going in, but when you rescue this puppy that you think is just going to be okay, cool. I'll rescue the puppy. We'll vet it. We always hold our dogs, you know, 10 to 14 days for a quarantine to see right. if they're going to get sick, like you right. know, kennel cough or whatever. But right. but we've literally, you know, been devastated where like a whole family comes down with parvo and then it's like, you know, a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars a dog to treat. Right. Because um, it's, you know, it's all supportive care. They have to be at the vet. So um, back to that thing. Don't start a rescue unless <laughs> you have a lot of money. <laughs> well, it's too, uh, you know, good intentions aren't nearly enough. I mean, you do have to enter it intelligently. You have to have a plan and you have to be uh, disciplined about the, the number of dogs that you save versus the money you have in the bank. That Again, this is another argument that you and I have constantly. Um, yeah, that's tr- it's true. I mean, and I don't know any new rescue that doesn't over-rescue at the very beginning. And then you start to go, wow, I'm so overwhelmed. I realize I have 13 dogs at my house. Right. Perhaps I should either get fosters, a boarding facility, right. or not rescue as many dogs. So No, it's... it's um, it's too. It's it's way too overwhelming. There's way too many dogs to save. I, that's why I don't like looking at photos. It's too easy. <laughs> it's too easy to get attached, and yeah, I well, damn sure don't like to meet them yeah. personally. Because if I mean, just like you know, when we went to the uh, the LA shelter last year, there were so many dogs that all of us wanted to save, and it's so overwhelming. 
Yeah, that is a goal. One day I would love to just be able to um, go in at a certain, you know, whether it's the holidays or whatever, and just take all the dogs off the youth list, you know, because most, of, I mean, probably 99% of them are really good dogs. They just need either right. health care or um, some, re, you know, obedience training or whatever. Um, so that would be like, that's kind of a wish list for me. But yeah, I think you do, you have to be careful. Don't pull every single dog, which is, like you said, it's really hard. And it's certainly hard for me. I've gotten to where we're, where we're super overwhelmed, where I just delete the networkers' emails because I don't even want right. to look at the dog. Right. But then you have your friends who come in and go, yeah, hey, that's tough. and they that's text tough. you. And, yeah. you know, just recently, um, I, you know, I had swore we were not going to rescue many dogs in October because we had just taken 51 in September and we're getting ready to do our year end, um, push to rescue more dogs. And we were trying to get dogs into foster and everything. And, right. you know, I had somebody reach out about these three dogs on this property and, um, they were left behind and the neighbor was feeding them. And so I was like, Oh, I don't need three more dogs right now that I don't have fosters for. But, um, I went ahead and said yes. And knowing full well that that was going to be expensive, I was going to have to board them. So as they're picking them up that day, she sent me, she's, well, here's the fourth and they want to keep them <laughs> on the property, but here's how he's living. And he was chained to a picnic table and uh, that was his life. And I'm right. like, Oh, for fuck's sake, just bring all four of them. Yeah, so, I know. You, know, you end what, up with four. <laughs> you didn't want any, and you end up with four. So. Well, the other, th- the other th- advice I would give, and this is anything that you're starting, you know, whether it's a sports team, business team, well, you know, whatever. Dog rescue. Yeah, dog rescue is surround yourself by, you know, good people. And um, uh, I think we've been lucky, especially the last three years, that we've – I think our senior team's great. It took us a while, but we do have a fantastic senior team. We have fantastic, you know, steady volunteers. We do have a amazing group of people who do support us and fund, you know, a lot of our uh, fundraisers and donate and, you know, our monthly donors. And we have those people. And again, if it wasn't for that, right. we wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah, well, that's true. You like Hope for Paws. They've been so awesome. Well, since we've been, uh, since our inception, but for sure the last three or four years, they've, with Without them, we we would be in, in holy hell for yeah. sure. Yeah, and they're um, you know Eldad and another red are very generous, um, and they also spend all of their time out there, you know, rescuing animals. They do a lot. They do a lot. They yeah. even did a lot of wildlife rescues this yeah. year. So no. yeah, no, we're we're very fortunate to have good partnerships, good volunteers, you know, good senior team, and. Um, and, you know, I'm, I also feel very fortunate to have Mackenzie and Sean on the team because that's been super helpful. So, Yeah, they've really stepped up. They really have. <laughs> well, you know, they, it was like almost kicking and screaming back in the beginning. Right. <laughs> but, right. Um, but now it's funny. They're both still here and really contributing it. So. Oh, we're a bit lucky to have them. All right. So I guess I guess the other the other uh, suggestion would be have more kids. Yeah, have more kids. That's the way the farmers did it, <laughs> That's right? right? That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Please tune in next week. Subscribe for Thanks, the love of dogs. Thanks everybody for listening. Yeah, we can't do this without you. Hang tough, everybody. <laughs>